हेलो 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 एवरीवन हियर वी आर ओके आई थिंक वी गुड नाउ आई थिंक वी गुड हाउ इज एवरीवन वन टूनाइट आर वी ऑल हियर डिड वी मेक इट Oh, I'm so sorry it's so late. <laughs> hello, hello. You know, I st <laughs> I thought I hit everything um in OBS and I was like, "Cool, we're going to go." I started talking, um then realized I wasn't live. I forgot to hit go live in YouTube. But we're here. We made it. Susan's had her whack at us today. If you guys were there for the the stream with uh uh the Dr. Lola Mains uh and Marie <laughs> my uh Susan did not like me, so I just hung out and chat and folded laundry on that stream mainly. But we're here. We made it. Uh, getting my little uh, slideshow together took much longer than I thought, and I really apologize for that. I'm so sorry I had to push it back. Um, but, you know, we're here. We made it. I'm excited. Um, I'm kind of, like, super hyped. It's going to be fun. We're going to go down a little bit of a rabbit hole. Um, a little bit of the history of broth we shall start with before we get into the recipe. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. All right. Sorry about that. This is why I have a manager. <laughs> okay. I think we're good. No more mess ups. We got this. We got to talk about important things, which is broth. Bone broth. Very important. Very good. We're going to... Whew. I gotta, I gotta chill out a little bit. It feels very, very high stakes tonight. Like, ah, gotta get the spreadsheet done. Gotta battle Susan. Gotta make sure I can see chat. Make sure I'm streaming right. <laughs> it is, uh, many moving parts. <laughs> all right, all right. So, hello, chat. Hello, everyone. How is everyone tonight? Did you guys have dinner? What did you have for dinner? Uh, I'm, I haven't really had a dinner proper. Uh, I made a big butt, a bit, bunch of bread, bunch of bread today. Um, and so I've mainly eaten bread today. <laughs> bread and butter has been my main source of food today. Um, I'll probably have some leftover soup later though. Uh, but for now we're good. So hello, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome Happy Mars. Welcome V. VKLCOM Welcome Nye, welcome Pentrodon I'm doing my best <laughs> Good night or, uh, Hello, hello Alright, ah. hello Eric Hello Oog Oobiggy Hello Bot06 Hello Owl Bandit Hello Tomb World Hello Sienna Hello, let's see who else is here a physics wom physical wombat. All right, we're here. We're here, and I think we're good. I think we're finally good. I think we're finally ready. Oh, I gotta hit my BGM. Hang on here. BGM, where'd you go? BGM, where'd you go? BGM is playing. Okay, hang on. OBS. It looks like it's there. Can you guys hear the BGM? BGM, is it there? Let's see. I had some turkey soup in honor of tonight's stream. Mmm, delicious. Do love. I've got uh, I've got a, a bunch of turkey broth and a bunch of um leftover turkey that I've been meaning to like make into a casserole or something. <laughs> Doe baby is trying to provide BGM. Yep, come here. Hmm, I'm not sure why the uh, music is not coming through. Let's see, soup stream. Yes, soup stream. Here, hang on just a second. I'm going to see if I can fix that BGM.
All right, we are working to make sure everything is hopefully going to go smooth from now on. It's been it's been an interesting day day for trying to stream for me. I feel the I feel the scuff pain tonight. I don't know. I'd have to look back to see like how many streams I've had that didn't have any scuff. Uh oh well oh well we're here we're making it. We are uh, making sure everything is ship sheep and ready to rumble. We're gonna talk about broth. Uh, let's see, I've started making broth. Like, well, my family has been making broth for a long while now, uh, especially once we got to the farm. Uh, so. Alright, uh, let's see. How's sound coming through, by the way? <laughs> How is sound? How is sound? How's the BGM? Is the voice too loud? How's it all going? Um, anyway, but uh, family's made broth for a long while. And um, I started making broth more. Yeah. Uh, I think, I don't know. It's been like a, a year or so that I was like, oh, I should make some. Uh, wait, wait, hang on. Okay, how's that? How's that? Is that better? Be 11 by this time the stream actually starts <sighs> okay all good now okay anyway my family's name's broth and then moved away from home i didn't really care about making broth much i was like oh i'm gonna do you know other things in life were going on and i i i actually just you know i would buy cartons of broth and you know the battle bullion kind of stuff um and that stuff's fine it's nice you know I know, you know, Senna loves her Beyond Bullion. I feel like if you gotta have a, a substitute, that one's pretty good. Though, it really comes down to just, it's a, a it's flavoring water. It's, you know, it's just flavoring water is all that kind of stuff is. Like, the box stuff at the store, the Bullion cubes, the Beyond Bullion, it's just flavor. It's just adding the flavor, which is fine, but, you know, there's more to it. And we'll get into that. Um, so anyway... Uh, started making broth more consistently. Aw, oh, man, once you start, it's hard to go back. It's so good. It's so good. It's just, it's more filling, better for your body, more robust. Um, and it can be intimidating, but I think there's ways you can fit it into your life. You know, you take it one little step at a time. Um, I'll try and help, you know, help outline a few ideas to help kind of fit it in, especially to a a busy, just regular, you know, urban life, if you will. And, um, I know you're talking. So, yeah. Uh, first what we'll do is, uh, we are going to go into the, a little bit of history of broth. Um, found a very nice, uh, article by the, uh, how do you say it? I think it's the Weston uh, Price Foundation. I'll have to look at it exactly again. Uh, good article there. That's a, a good resource, uh. They specialize in doing studies and looking at, like, you know, going out to sort of isolated populations, you know, like native tribes or things like that, uh, and seeing how, like, their food and nutrition is compared to how, like, the nutrition in our food is in, like, most developed countries. Um, so they have a lot of really good resources. Um, so we're going to read an article by them. also have just some other little tidbits that I looked up on, like, WebMD about uh, facts about uh, broth and its benefits. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll dig into the history a little bit, talk about that, uh, go down the rabbit hole, a little bit of broth pilling going on, and then I will teach you guys how to make your very own bone broth. So yeah, it's gonna be fun. Alrighty, let's see here. Doo -doo. Alright, so how are you chat? Here, let me take a minute and catch up with you guys. I think... The sounds good. I think our our web setup is good. I think everything is finally good. No more scuff. Say it with me. No more scuff. Susan needs to take a break. She needs to go chill out. She can't be around all the time, can she? So it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine from now on. Yes. All right, driving home in the rain. Y'all have fun night uh, now. Thank you. I hope you have a good night too, Diego. 
Oh, yes, all right. Okay, okay. Let's see. It's fine using better than bullion in some of the brands of stock I like, but I'm sure homemade is top notch. Yes. I mean, flavor wise, yeah. Uh, but also, a lot of other things that are better. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, I'm I'm gonna go down the rabbit hole. And maybe get a little passionate here. Um, don't let that like, don't, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to shame you guys. Like, oh, how could you guys not have time and space to have all this delicious broth? It's so good for your body. Uh, which it is. But I also understand, you know. You know, better than bouillon. It's still good. It's still food. You know. Still get some yummy food in your tummy. So, yeah, you're, yeah, okay, okay. So, if uh, if all is well now, I believe we are ready <laughs> to get started. A whole hour after I meant to stream, but you know it is what it is. Part of that was on me. Part of it's on Susan. But you know what? We're here now. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop rambling about the woulda shoulda coulda's and we're gonna get right into it. All right. Let's see. Tal says uh, most I can think of for making broth is taking the leftovers of a cooked chicken or turkey and just boiling it, then separating the stock and leftover bones and such. Yes, yeah, that's that's basically it. It's uh, cooking down the uh, uh, cooking the bones and all the other parts that you can't like straight up eat to get all the uh, nutrients and minerals and all that kind of stuff from the bones so that nothing's wasted and uh we'll go into there's a way where you can just like you can cook the like meat straight like doing a chicken stock uh and then there's the bone broth so i'll get to that all right no susan has a hot date with gavis and fettel tonight <laughs> yeah <laughs> i feel his pain man <laughs> baby seal broth i mean i guess if you Seals have bones, right? Do seals have bones? If seals have bones, then you can make broth. And yeah, we and you know, I used better than bullion right up until uh, I became a broth fiend. So, yeah, I was there too. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's pretty yummy and it's nice and compact. So, better than bullion is a good option uh, if you're if you're mainly. Just need something to flavor it. So, all right. Without, let's see. Let's see, hey Minna, and your homesteading classes. How to make nutrient death broth? How is it going? Oh, thank you, Song Wang Wang. Uh, we are about to get started finally. <laughs> so, let's go. All right. So, got my little slide over here. But first, we are going to hop on over here to. Let me go up. Doo -doo -doo. Yes, the Weston A. Price Foundation. Good resource here. All right. Uh, why broth is beautiful. Essential role. Oh, wait, no. This, hang on. Let's do this one first. Broth is beautiful. This other one's handy, too. Um, and more goes into, like, the details of all the, the good stuff in it. We might look at that next. All righty. All right, all right, all right. Let's see here. So, broth is beautiful. Yes. Yes, it is. Especially a fresh batch. It's There's something something beautiful about it. Alright, so... Um, I, I don't think I'll read the whole thing because it's uh, rather lengthy, but I will uh, touch on certain parts. Uh, so, good broth. Very important. Uh, a cure-all in traditional homes and magic ingredient in classic gourmet cuisine. Stocks or broth made from bones of chicken, fish, and beef build strong bones uh a sausage sore throats nurtures the sick puts vigor in the step and sparkle in love life oh. uh so says grandmothers midwives and healers from chefs stock is the magic elixir for making soul warming soups and matchless sauces mm. it's a key key ingredient for many things. Uh, I will do my best with reading. <laughs> I'm sometimes trying to like sound out words, especially live. I kind of freak out a little bit, but I'll try. Mm -hmm. You're awake. Why are you awake? Anyway. All right. So mm -hmm. 
Let's come down here. Okay. Do -do. Meat and fish stocks play a role in traditional cuisine. Uh, French, Italian, Chinese, Japanese, African, South American, Middle Eastern, and Russian. In America, stock went into gravy, soups, and stews. Uh, that was when animals were slaughtered locally and nothing went to waste. Bones, hooves, knuckles, carcasses, and tough meat went into the stock pot and filled the homes with the aroma of love. Today, we buy individual uh, fillets and boneless chicken breasts or grab fast food on the run, and stock has disappeared from the American tradition. Hmm. Let's see. Your grandmother knew best, since science validates uh, what our grandmothers knew. Rich homemade chicken broths help cure colds. Stock contains minerals in a form the body can absorb easily. Not just calcium, but also magnesium, phosphates, uh, does that say silicone? Sulfurs, and trace minerals. It contains the broken down minerals from cartilage and tendons, stuff like mm, however you say that word. Uh, some scientific words that are important uh, that I would have to Google to figure out how to pronounce. Uh, now sold as ex expensive supplements for arthritis and joint pains. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's see. All right. Do, 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 do. Next part. Down we go. Let's see. When broth is cooled, it congeals due to the presence of uh, gelatin. Very important gelatin. The use of gelatin as a therapeutic agent goes back to the ancient Chinese. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? <laughs> Oh, I know, you're trying to take it over. I have things to say too. All right, let's see. Um, yeah, you got me distracted now. Yeah, what? Do you want broth? You'll get broth soon. Yeah, when you can eat, you can have broth. Broth is actually, you know, super great for, oh my, yeah. It's uh, super great for, uh, <laughs> really, huh, <laughs> you got me all distracted. It's super great for uh, uh, babies when they start to eat. Lots of really good nutritious stuff, huh? Yeah. Let's see. Uh, mm. I can't think. No, I can't. You're too cute. Yeah. What? What is it? Really? Do you want broth? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What do you have to say about that? You sound like a, a squeaky seal. You're so squeaky. <laughs> ah, my brain's already fried by everything and now you're just talking to me. Yeah. Now you're sticking your tongue out at me. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Can I read now? Do you want to read? Are you, is that all you had to say? Are you good now? Okay. <laughs> okay. I think, I think I'm good. <laughs> oh, I think I'm good now. Okay. Okay. <sighs> all right, chat. Okay, brain back in focus. <laughs> back in focus, brain. Gotta read. Gotta tell you guys about broth. Woo! All right. I can do this. I'm a streamer. I got this. Okay. <laughs> ah! Okay. Anyway, we were talking about. Yes, we were. <laughs> yes, we were. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> Oh, uh, we were talking about uh, how gelatin, uh, which is a very important uh, component or ingredient in our body, is uh, present in uh, in broth. Uh, I believe it contributes a lot to our joints and our skin. Uh, you know, give you nice clear skin, give you nice like mobile joints or something like that. Um, <laughs> and uh, 
Let's see. The use of gelatin as a therapeutic agent goes back to the ancient Chinese. Gelatin was probably the first functional food, dating from the invention of uh, digestor by the Frenchman Pepin in 1682. Pippin's, Pepin's digester consisted of an apros, apertos, apertos for cooking bones or meat with steam to extract the gelatin. Uh, just as vitamins occupy the center of the stage in nutritional investigations today, so 200 years ago, gelatin held a position in the forefront of food research. Gelatin was universally acclaimed as a most nutritious foodstuffs, particularly by the French, who were seeking ways to feed their armies and vast numbers of homeless in Paris and other cities. Although gelatin is not a complete protein, counting only the amino acids uh, are gin, argain, argain, and glycan in large amounts, it acts as a protein spacer, helping the poor stretch a few morsels of meat into a complete meal. During the siege of Paris, when vegetables and meat were scarce, a doctor named... Gerard put his patients on gelatin bouillon with some added fat, and they survived in good health. Good health, yes. Okay. I apologize for butchering words. <laughs> Woo! So, yes. Squeaky. Squeaky, squeaky. You're squeaky. Anyways. All right. <laughs> all right. Maybe... <laughs> Okay, next next little spot. Yes. All right. Actually, hang on. I think he might be too squeaky. I think my brain short circuiting. Hang on, just a moment. Okay, we're back, chat. <laughs> I can't, I can't read and bounce a baby at the same time. It's so distracting. I'm sorry. <sighs> okay, so, okay. <laughs> Hopefully, you gleaned a little bit about the um, uh, the uh, the prominence of broth uh from pretty early on. Um, you know, I'm sure, like from the very beginning, people were like, oh. We've got all this stuff, all these animal bits that we can't just eat. Let's boil it and then drink the water. It's a great idea. And it was. It was a fabulous idea. Uh, and it continued for many centuries and gave many people good health. And as you saw, you know, even like if you barely had any other food, having enough, uh, having that uh, satiating uh, good broth to help uh, sustain you was a very good thing. But, um... The French were the leaders in gelatin research, which continued up to the 1950s. Gelatin was found to be useful in the treatment of a long list of diseases. Um, and there's a bunch of diseases there. Uh, the American researcher uh, Francis Potter pointed out that as gelatin is a hydropolic uh, colloid, which means that it attracts and holds liquid, it facilitates digestion by attracting digestive juices to foods in the gut. Even the epicures recognized the broth-based soup did more than please the taste buds. Soup is a healthy, light, nourishing food, said brilliant Suave Sovereign. Uh, good for all of humanity. It pleases the stomach, stimulates the appetite, and prepares the digestion. All right. So, yeah. Very good stuff. Uh, but it stopped around the 1950s. I wonder why that is, chat. Why in the world would they stop, like, researching such a valuable and filling and nutritious food stuff, you know? You know? All right. So. Attention to detail. Let's see. Ah. Uh, one thing to know is uh, 
for beef and lamb broth, and the meat is browned in a hot oven uh, to form compounds that give flavor and color the result of a fusion of amino acids with sugar called maillard ma reaction. Uh, then all goes into in the meat. Pot meat, bones, vegetables, and water. The water should be cold uh, because slow heating helps bring out flavor. Add vinegar to the broth to help extract calcium. Uh, remember those eggshells you soaked in vinegar until they turned rubbery. Hmm. So yes, adding a uh, adding a vinegar helps extract stuff. So you know this is uh, this is just giving a, a lowdown of how to uh, you know, how to how to make the broth. But I'll get you. I'll cover that in a minute. Um, so yes, again, uh, research on gelatin um, came to an end in the 1950s because the food companies discovered how to introduce uh, the uh, Ma Maillard reaction and produce meat-like flavors in the laboratory. In a general food company report issued in 1947, chemists predicted that almost all natural flavors would soon be chemically synthesized. And this is why when you read ingredients and it says natural flavors, you want to be maybe just a little bit, just a little bit skeptical of that. Because the oftentimes things like natural flavors and fragrance, that's just like a catch-all and they don't have to actually tell you what it is. Anyway, um, and following the Second World War, food companies also discovered uh, monosodium uh, glucid, glucimate. Uh, otherwise known as MG, MSG, a food ingredient that Japanese had the Japanese had invented in 1908 to enhance food flavors, including meat-like flavors. Humans actually have receptors on the tongue for glutamate. Uh, glutamate. Uh, it is the protein in food that the human body recognizes as meat. So there you go. There's um, you know. That started in the 50s. It's been, you know, what? At least 70 years, right? Yeah. Something like that. Um, and this is very much uh, invaded pretty much all of our, our food sources. Is the uh, the way that's like, oh, we can, we can cut this corner. We can just enhance the flavor. And it'll taste pretty much the same. Close enough. Uh, it's cheaper. And we can sell it to the mass produce it. Um, I doubt anyone doing these things really thought like, oh, this is going to, you know, like, oh, surely this won't lead to a bunch of bad consequences. I doubt most people on the individual level are malicious, but it's, you know, it's just the, uh, it's business and bureaucracy, you know, and when it's like, oh, this helps the bottom line, or you know, oh, all the paperwork that needs to be done for this. I don't know. This is those kinds of things. I feel like those those are the things versus the individual person that tend to make these kind of big changes that roll out into the world very prominent, and then it's then we're stuck with it, and then we got to figure out how to like be like, oh, hang on a second, let's uh let's maybe reverse and uh, kind of come back to the basics of like not having all this synthesized and processed stuff in our body because maybe our body isn't doing so well on it, you know? So anyway, uh, it's hard because it's everywhere now. It's like you have to try really hard to like dial it back and figure out like, okay, what, what changes can I make? And it's kind of overwhelming to make those changes and figure out how to like source good resources. Uh, but here's one simple way, broth. So, uh, we'll Let's see if there's any other tidbits from here specifically. Um, let's see. Um, most serious, uh, however, were the problems posed by uh, MSG. Uh, problems the industry had worked very hard to conceal from the public. In 1957, scientists found that mice became blind and obese when MSG was administered by feeding tube. In 1969, MSG-induced uh, Leon's lesions were found in the hypothalamus region of the brain. Uh, other studies all point to the same in the same direction. MSG is a neurotoxic substance that causes a wide range of reactions, from temporary headaches to permanent brain damage. So yeah, it's you know. 
It's a pretty new thing. It's only been a handful of decades since this thing's been like mass produced into our society. And I don't know, you, you look at how people, like the health of people back, you know, 50, 80 years ago, and you look at it now. And you look at all the changes that have happened to our food. And, you know, it kind of makes you wonder a little bit. Anyways, um, let's see. So, there, there's a little bit of background. Um, I feel like <laughs> everything's been going on, uh, you know, the stream started later, <laughs> unfortunately. And, uh, I think the rest of this is just, you know, touching on some more points. Um, I can leave a link to this in the description of the video if anyone wants to go back and read more of it. Uh, this other spot over here talks a little more about, um, I guess sort of more of the nitty gritties about, like, exactly the things that are in, uh, in the broth. All the, like, minerals and all the different kind of components that work together. Uh, there's no way I could read this. <laughs> too many, too many words that... I have to sit down and actually, like, spell out, which is very hard for me to do. Um, so anyway, maybe I'll leave that in the description as well. So, in the meantime, how are you doing, chat? Uh, we're gonna talk about broth next. So, broth. How to make it. How to make broth by Minna Vanilla. That's neat. So first off, you ready chat? You ready? I'm trying to keep an eye on you, find any questions that might pop up. Let's see, uh, FYI, MSG is still smuggled into foods under other names uh, despite these findings. Yep. It's uh, even when very obvious things are found in like Incredible research of like, hey, maybe you shouldn't x-ray women during labor. Even when it's shown to like cause cancer. When something's a, an established thing, it takes a while for that to like die off or for people to finally get rid of it because people are, you know, everyone else is so used to, oh, this is how we do things. Um, so yeah. MSG is actually kind of epic, but I mean, is it worth it? Is it worth it? I don't know. I'd rather have the real stuff myself. So, here we are. Here we are. Uh, the difference is in stock and broth. I burned my water. Pen Penadron or uh, Penadrona? Pen Penadron. How did you burn your water? Did all the water burn, like, evaporate and then you just had a hot pot? It's worth it because it tastes good, but it doesn't taste as good. It really doesn't. It's just a cheap way to make flavor. That's all it is. It's a cheap way to make flavor. And it really does like, if you, you can't tell me that you take some bouillon and mix it in water, and then you take a cup of homemade sipping broth. They really can't compare. They really can't compare. Like they might taste better, but then, like, and then it on its own might be okay, but then you have, like, all the other toxins that are piling up around us to the point that our soil is not the same anymore. And you just have one thing after another piled up on you. Like, how much can our bodies take of these processed and synthetic things before it, like, can't operate optimally? You know? You know? Just saying. Just saying. Alright, anyway. So, differences in stock and broth. So, stock is made from bones with meat still attached, vegetables, and aromatics simmering in water for around uh, two to six hours. Um, when it's chilled, it should be gelatinous. So that's, you know, that's cooking the meat with it. You know, you put a chicken in the stock pot, uh, let it go for a couple hours, have just a nice, um, nice pretty light broth, um, really easy to digest. Uh, so, broth is simply meat simmered in water. Uh, typically with vegetables and aromatics and can uh, include some bones. For example, when cooking a roast, the liquid left in the pot after cooking is broth. Uh, it will be mostly liquidy when chilled. So it's, you know, doesn't have as much of the gelatin, but, you know, is a nice little kind of, you know, 
collecting of all the yummy kind of aromatics and yummy juices from the meat. Uh, that's great to use in gravy. Bone broth um, is most similar to stock, but with some key differences. The goal of bone broth is to extract maximum nutrients, and therefore it has a longer cook time. Bone broth also differs from stock in that it uses a mix of bones with less meat on them. When made properly, it will become very gelatinous when chilled. Also, like, have you guys, I wish I, I should have pulled up a video of how nice it looks when it jiggles. You guys, like, having that, that jiggly broth where it's just like so gelatinous and so like mm, that it like when it's cold it jiggles like jello and then you put it like in your soup and your food like mwah. like you, you, you can't replace that you can't replace that you can't synthesize that jiggle it's too good uh, can you use a crock pot to make broth yes yes you can uh, I've not personally actually made it in a crock pot uh, but you absolutely can and I have uh, in just a minute, I have like the, the three main ways you can, uh, like tools that you can use. So yeah, today we'll be talking about specifically bone broth. Um, but yeah, those are two other, uh, stock and broth. There's all, you know, a slight little difference between them. All right. Any other questions, chat? Following along? Feeling good? Soup broth is awesome. Yep. You can also use it. You can, uh, if you just want to have the like nutrition of it, you can make your rice with broth. You can make like a casserole with broth. Problem with MSG and box broth is that the taste doesn't match up to the beneficial protein, uh, peptides, min, uh, vitamins, and minerals that is lacking. It may taste good, but just empty. Exactly. Exactly. That is exactly what it's about. Is it synthesized? You know. It has the flavor, the taste, the taste buds, but the rest isn't there. And your body's missing the rest of that. For centuries, we had all of that helping support our bodies. And now, all that we get is the taste. That's what I'm saying. So, thank you. Uh, Ubergy? E buggy baggy? Ooh, baggy? <laughs> I'm trying with the names, guys. My mom always uses store-bought chicken broth, and that's, I mean, that's fine. Like, you can do that. Like, I used to, I mean, my family used to make broth a bunch, and when I moved out, I was like, oh, it's convenient to just buy some broth. But then you're, you're kind of spending a lot of money buying cartons of basically salted flavored water. That's what, like, most of the broth at the store is, salted flavored water. That's it. You can still buy it. You can still use it if you'd prefer that. That's fine. But you're... That's all it is. Salted flavor water. Alright. Alrighty, so... Next slide is... Here we go. Come on. The benefits of broth. We've also... We've already been talking about it a bit. Uh, but this this is from WebMD. Um, most bone broth has at least uh, trace amounts of several nutrients. Uh, adding vegetables to bone broth can also significantly significantly enhance its natural benefits. Uh, health benefits of bone broth include weight management. Broth and broth-based soups can help you feel full despite their low calorie content, making it an excellent choice for people following a weight loss diet plan. Uh, better hydration. The higher water content in bone broth helps you stay hydrated. Water makes up 70% of the body and impacts virtually every bodily function. Part two, uh, improved sleep. Bone broth contains small amounts of amino acid glycan, glycan uh, which may promote relaxation and deeper, more restorative sleep. Uh, nutrition, bone broth is easy to make a flavorful part of many complex, delicious recipes. It also, it's also a great way to use otherwise inedible animal bones and tissues. Healing. Uh, bone broth is, okay, so this, this, this last part specifically for me. Uh, bone broth is a cornerstone in the GAPS diet uh, that many have found success in healing their gut and recovering from health issues. Um, it, it's the GAPS diet though specifically is a very intense, like very restrictive diet where you're cutting out pretty much like 
all the stuff that is harder to digest to give your body a chance to fix like the leaky gut and it's that's that's a different topic uh many people though have found that following that has helped with some severe health problems uh the gut's really important which is also why broth is important because it supports the gut so well and uh like there's one lady um who she was like a, a ve vegetarian for a long time and she had so many health issues that um when she looked into this and she was like she switched from being a vegetarian to her diet mainly like a, a large part of her diet being homemade bone broth uh and it was able to heal a whole bunch of health issues that she was having <laughs> so it was kind of an extreme switch for her, but it was totally worth it uh but it's also like a, a really intense diet like you have to cut out like a whole lot of stuff it's, it's like a, a huge process but it's worked really well for a lot of people and bone broth is a large part of that which just shows how important broth can be in uh healing and restoring your gut all right let's see the next one let's see i'll probably i'll, I'll go through this and then and then me you know me and you chat we, we can duke it out after this uh i keep i keep trying to keep up with you <laughs> I know there's probably a lot going on. So we'll we'll go through this first. We'll have questions and we'll go from there. All right. So making your broth methods, you could, um, one, use your Instapot. That's how I do it. Um, only takes about two hours plus the time it takes to come to pressure. Um, you could do it on the stove. Uh, though if you're doing bone broth where it's mainly bones and you're like, you know, trying to get a whole lot of all the stuff out of those bones, it's going to be like 12 hours. If you only have, if you want to do a stove top, like you only have like a pot that you want to make a uh, stock in, um, do stock, which is basically the only difference is like you add all the stuff in, but you add a, a chicken. I think you, you probably want to cut the chicken up a little bit, like take a raw chicken and, you know, kind of separate the pieces up a bit and then cook that in your pot on the stove with all the aromatics and everything and, uh, for like, I think like two to four hours. Um, so look up like a specifically stock recipe if you only have like a pot to make uh, like a broth with. Um, otherwise it's gonna take you like 12 hours simmering on the stove for bone broth to work. Or crock pot. You can uh, take all your stuff, put it in a crock pot, put it on low like overnight um, and you'll have broth. So there you go. So. Uh, don't have bones. Uh, want an easy way to kickstart your meal prep for the week? Roast a chicken. I do this all the time. Uh, very simple and will not only give you bones for broth, uh, but also a lot of protein for other meals. Alternatively, you can make chicken stock by slow cooking on the stove, like I just said. So yeah, uh, that's, yeah, so far one of my favorite ways is just regularly roasting a chicken, uh, because then you can take all the meat off, uh, use it in other meals, you know, just have some chicken to be able to throw on whatever you need, like making fried rice. Um, or you could freeze it, like if you don't need chicken that week, you could just freeze it and then you have a cooked protein to be able to like thaw out and for throw into food. Um, and then save all the bones, save all that skin, all that connective tissue, all that cartilage, all that has all the um, good gelatin um, in it that's very good for you. So. Just cook a chicken, take the meat off, save all those bones. If you're not making broth soon, just keep it in the freezer in a little bag. All right, ingredients. So as you can see my little picture, I've got uh, bones. I mostly use chicken bones. Uh, if you're using something like beef bones, um, especially that have like, you know, those big round ones with all the marrow and stuff. You'll want to roast those at uh, 450 degrees Fahrenheit for about uh, 30 to 40 minutes. And that article we just read touched on it. I actually didn't know the reason why you roasted them before we read that little snippet. Um, but yeah, so bigger, thicker bones, like big beef bones, roast a little bit beforehand. Uh, I tend to just have chicken that I have saved up to use. Um, water uh you don't have to filter it if you don't want to uh but if you want to just add that extra cleanly you know smoothness i guess 
you can filter it. Uh, aromatics, salt, pepper, garlic, pretty much any herb or spice of your liking. Mushrooms are also a great, uh, like, you know, there's a lot of good stuff in mushrooms that you can, like, draw out of the mushrooms. Plus, it gives a really nice flavor, kind of a nice deep, uh, maybe a little bit earthy flavor. Um, I like using uh, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, or you could use half a cup. I forgot to put a cup there. Half a cup of red or white wine. And also some veggie scraps, usually onion, carrots, and celery. Um, most of the time you want to cut like the roots off of pretty much, you know, I don't know, most, most things I see you cut the root off of like, you know, the onion and the carrot or the garlic. Um, what I did in this, uh, this specific time was I just like quartered up an onion. Uh, sometimes I'll just save the onion peel scraps, um, cut off the root of the carrot, and I had like a bag of, um, some celery scraps and threw it all in. So step one is add your ingredients to the pot. Um, and usually, a lot of times I'll have just like, I'll cook a chicken and then I'll put those, you know, just keep the bones from that chicken or sometimes I'll save up like a handful of bones over some time. Um, so put your, all your ingredients in. I put about like a, a gallon freezer bag worth of like chicken bones. I did three carrots, an onion, about like three cloves of garlic, uh, you know, the roots cut off those, handful of celery scraps, you know, when you're cutting celery and it's like the leafy part or that kind of like white end part you don't want to eat, throw those in the freezer, use it in your stock. Uh, and a couple of bay leaves. Um, I also did a teaspoon salt, two teaspoons salt and half teaspoon pepper, plus my two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Next, step two, add water to a, a couple inches above your ingredients. So pour it in, make sure you have, you know, it covers everything plus maybe another inch. Uh, if you can see on my Instapot, um, I have, uh, this is my eight quart Instapot and I filled it up to like the fill line <laughs> just cause I had plenty of bones. So I made a nice big, big batch. Step three, start cooking. Uh, for the Instant Pot, I do 120 minutes, which is about two hours on high pressure. Uh, or you could do in the uh, crock pot, or if you wanna put it on the stove for like half a day. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not too, going too fast. I feel, like, I feel like I'm speeding through this. How are you guys doing? Are you following? Is this good? Sounding good? Time should be added later since the oils evaporate easily. Ah. I feel like that makes sense, especially on the stove. Uh, the Instant Pot, everything's kind of trapped in it. Um, I'd have to experiment. All right, let's see. Got Dobe be back. Cook with the root, cooks everything. Uh, take the dirt pill. I mean, yeah, you could too. I'm sure it would be fine with the uh, with the root on. I just see most places say cut it off, but you know your preference. All right, step four. Here we go. So, step four is all done. You can scoop out the solid stuff before or after straining. Uh, I have a handy little scooper, so I went ahead and scoop stuff out to just make it easier. Um, and you can already see, like, look how pretty that is. It's very pretty, very pretty of broth there. And then it comes time to strain. I forgot to add in this one, you'll probably want like a ladle, like a nice big ladle to help uh, scoop it out. Um, so you'll strain the broth to get all the little bits out. You know, there, there's a lot of little random things that float in there. Uh, I like having a nice kind of smooth broth where there's not a lot of extra. So I take a strainer and then I've used a um, like a little, like a wide measuring cup because it has a nice like pour spout on it or you could just use a bowl. Um, but I also now have a nice little canning funnel and a little strainer in it. Uh, so I use that this time and my cheesecloth because uh, that's that's a great way to help catch all the little bits. Um, and then you fill your jars. 
but oops, just be careful not to overfill and spill if the cloth is blocking your sight. I've done it many times <laughs> where that cheesecloth is kind of hanging over it and you're not paying attention and then you realize all your precious broth is spilling on the counter. <sighs> no fun. Step six, strain and store. Keep in fridge for about a week or freeze or can for longer storage. Uh, I've been experimenting reducing the broth to save space. Um, so yeah, I'll, I've done it a couple times where I'll take the broth and after it's done, I'll put it on a pot in the stove and boil a bunch of the water off to see if I can like reduce it by half. And so then it takes less space like in the freezer. Um, but then I can just like add a bit of water in to uh, make it uh, you know, into whatever I need to. I don't think I got pictures. Um, I was, yeah, I did not get the pictures, but recently, um, took some broth and sort of made it a um, a ramen broth. So I took some broth and then just added some more stuff to it um, and like simmered it a bit for like 30 minutes to just, you know, add the flavors, you know, did some mushrooms and some more like garlic or ginger. I s simmered all that together with some already condensed broth. Um, and so by the time it was done, it was like very intense and very salty. Um, but I figured out it was like a, a one to two ratio, you know, half a cup of that with a cup of water made a really nice homemade, uh, broth. And so I froze that. So now I've got a couple little, uh, portion sizes so that if we need like a quick dinner or a quick lunch, I can pull that out, heat it up with the extra water, uh, cook some, uh, ramen noodles and boom, good, delicious, homemade, uh, ramen broth. It's very delicious. And make broth work for you. Homemade broth has endless benefits. You can, uh, if you can, find little ways to fit it into your life. Keeping a bag of bones and veggie scraps in your freezer. Start a habit of roasting a chicken regularly. Freeze it into portions for easy cooking. I tend, I often do, you know, maybe some freezer bags with like either two cups or four cups. Um, that way if I'm cooking something, I'm like, oh, I need this many cups of broth. I can pull it out, uh, run it under the water, get it out of the bag, and, you know, throw it in whatever I'm doing. Uh, and uh, also making some good sipping broth and freezing it for when you're sick. You'll thank yourself later for sure. Like, I mean, not only for just the, you know, it feels really nice having a nice cup of warm broth when you're sick, um, just like on your throat and everything, but very, <laughs> beneficial for when you're sick especially I mean it, that's that's the reason chicken soup is the thing like oh chicken soup when you're sick isn't because of the chicken so much you know the chicken soup part of it is the broth having a good broth um, but also you know a bit of protein and stuff but mainly having that good broth um, I'm a, I've made like there's once I made this sipping broth that was so good like it tasted just like a yummy soup uh, it didn't even like taste like a plain broth. It was just like so delicious. I haven't quite replicated that again. I need to though because it was so good. Uh, but having a really good broth saved for when you're sick. Even if like you, you don't cook regularly or you don't have broth regularly. Try it. Like try this out. Try making. Look up like specifically a nice like uh, sipping broth recipe. Put lots of uh, garlic in it when you cook it. Um, and you know, whatever other stuff to flavor it, some mushrooms really help. Uh, make just like a really nice flavorful broth to save for when you're sick and freeze that and you'll thank yourself later. Uh, you can also, when you're drinking it, you can season it with um, like some, like soy sauce. Soy sauce is actually really nice for seasoning it and giving it a little extra salt if you need it. Um, you can also use it in uh, hot chocolate. I have a friend who really loves making a uh, hot chocolate bone broth like making making hot chocolate but adding some bone broth to it uh she gets she gets a specific really nice quality broth from the store um so i if you if i did that i'd probably want to purposely make a maybe more plain broth so it doesn't interfere with the chocolate flavor so much <laughs> i've been wanting to try it though as well as like fudge sickles but with broth like homemade fudge sickles but add broth in it as like a another nice way to get some nutrition in um, 
So yeah, okay, there we go. Uh, I think that covers everything I wanted to talk about, like my, my little presentation for broth. So, all right, chat. Now we can chat, chat. Any questions you guys have? Let's see what you guys have been up to. <laughs> I put a five gallon pot uh, for use for something other than dog food. Oh, gotta put the five gallon pot uh, to use. Yes! Mm. Stock is an excellent way to do that. Uh, don't forget, yeah, if you want to do, if you do stovetop, I would definitely look up a, like, just Google, like, a, you know, stock recipe, you know, chicken stock recipe. And I'm pretty sure, like, if you do that, you could probably then take the bones from the chicken and make bone broth with it. Because, basically already, like, cooking the meat. Mushrooms and broth is very delicious. Yes, yes it is, Roxy. Uh, Foxy, Roxy. Oh, hello, Eve. Welcome to the chat. Eve, Evie, Eve, however you say it. All right. Do you think green onions would be a good addition to broth? Ooh, I think that would add a really nice flavor. Uh, can you put broth in ice trays so you can make small size servings? You absolutely can. I do that with smoothies too sometimes. Yeah. Uh, if I make a smoothie, <laughs> I thought you were gonna sleep. Um, I've done, so I've got, I recently got uh, like super cubes, which is like a specifically like freezer tool where it has different size, like <laughs> different size, like portions, like half cup, cup, two cups. Uh, those are nice, uh, but you can also like wing it where I've done, take like a muffin pan and done like fourth cup portions into it and frozen it then put it in a, a ziploc bag uh, you can get creative with however you want to freeze it uh just you know label it so you remember later there's many times i've like oh I'm like oh i'll remember and then no i don't remember what portion size do you ratio out uh your broth in the freezer i usually do either two cups or four cups uh like if i take a gallon freezer bag and put four cups in because a lot of times if you're making like a super casserole, like think about whatever recipe you might make the most uh, and what portion size you might need um, and go with that. So I do either two cups or four cups. Uh, we don't get too many VTubers that do cooking as a focus. Well, <laughs> welcome to Mina Vanilla where I bake a lot of bread and I like to talk about a lot of food stuff. I'm going to be teaching a fellow YouTuber how to cook on Tuesday. I'm excited for that. I'm going to teach uh, Niana how to make, um, I'm going to help her cook herself a dinner and feed herself good so that she doesn't just have to order takeout all the time. <laughs> because, I mean, takeout is fun, but it's expensive. I don't know, once, once, you, once your body gets used to really good quality food, like having the ingredients that are like whole foods and well sourced once your body gets used to that it starts recognizing how like fake a lot of food is mm -hmm. uh, let's see mm -hmm. let's see <laughs> instructions unclear kitchen is on fire no don't do that <laughs> can you make broth in an air fryer. I don't think so. Air fryer is like an... It's more like an oven. <laughs> really? Oh, I'm sorry. Are you tired? I bet you are. Ah! Don't scratch me. Don't scratch me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, really? He's trying to get his presentation. Yes, I know. Presentation of, I'm tired. I want some milk, right? Mm-hmm. Let's see. I'd like to make starter broths slash stocks and freeze them for later soups, like boiling a turkey neck all day while prepping Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, that's a way, great way to do it. Mm -hmm. Ever try chicken broth with rice? Uh, it's so delicious. Uh more if it's from chicken feet yeah yeah uh i feel like sometimes when i cook 
specifically when I cook, um, because we usually just cook it rice in the rice cooker, I feel like sometimes when I use broth with it, it gets, I'm not even quite sure, like, I don't know, it does, I don't know if I'm not adding enough, but I feel like it's drier sometimes, uh, or like, doesn't get the consistency I like, but I just need to play around with it more. Um, but yeah, rice, you know, putting in your rice is another great way of adding broth to your diet. Um, like, you know, getting the benefits and the nutrition, uh, if you don't feel like eating, you know, soup, or if you just want to add more broth in, rice is a great way to do it. Let's see. Air fries are overrated. Like cooking the fry, the air, like fries in the air fryer. I feel like the air fryer works mainly as like, like a convection oven, just like miniature. I have I have like a lid that goes on top of my Instapot to turn into an air fryer. Um, I haven't used it a whole lot, but I did make some killer chicken nuggets with it. I made some homemade chicken nuggets and cooked it in the air fryer. Um, though with the Instapot one, it's kind of small, so I just did it in batches. And then I froze them, and then I could just heat them up in the toaster oven, and it worked awesome. And then I didn't have to like, you know, then I had chicken nuggets at home. It was great. You know, it's like the meme, you know, we got chicken nuggets at home, but the chicken nuggets at home were actually better. They were delicious. Let's see. Ah. But fire, good. Kitchen on fire. Now no need to steal fire from neighbor. No, Greg, no. Don't set your kitchen on fire. That's a bad idea, isn't it? You tell him. <laughs> There's less actual water in the broth for rice to soak up uh, than pure water. I uh, might have to add the liquid up a bit. Okay, yeah. That, that's kind of what I figured. It didn't have as much of the uh, just straight water in it. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on filtering uh, cloudy broth. Um, I think the main factor is uh, like when you're doing it like on the stove, uh, as it starts to come to a boil uh, or as it starts simmering, you'll get the cloudy bits that kind of rise to the top. Yeah. Uh, and you want to skim that off. I think the article, maybe I'll go back to the article talked about it. Um, yeah. So I think mainly skimming skimming the stuff off the top. Uh, you might be able to do, like, if you're using the Instapot, you could maybe put it on, like, the saute button to let it come to a, kind of a boil simmer and skim the stuff that rises to the top. That should help um, make it less cloudy. Uh, and then a lot of times, once your, your broth is chilled, um, <laughs> oh, goodness, the, the fat will rise to the top. Uh, and so... <laughs> I'll usually, you know, strain my broth, put it in uh, the fridge, uh, let the, the fat and everything cool down, and then just, like, take the fat off the top of it. Uh, and sometimes I've used it in cooking. Uh, sometimes if it's, like, way too, like, flavored, like, if it doesn't really fit well as being a neutral, like, cooking fat, uh, I might toss it or toss it in the compost. Uh -huh. Sad I missed most of it, uh, but glad I get to actually learn things. Well, you're welcome. Um, I feel like I went through the slideshow really fast. I, I kind of want to click through it again. <laughs> um, I was, you know, trying not to get too distracted. Um, but yeah, uh, here, I'll, I'll click through it again real quick for you. Here, real quick, you know, on, uh, I might be able to post this too afterwards. It's very simple. Uh, all you need is make your broth. You can either use Instapot, stove pot, uh, or crock pot. Uh, easy way to get some bones for broth is roasting a chicken because then you get yummy meat and you can use the bones. Uh, for ingredients, uh, I mostly use, I'll use bones, uh, usually chicken. If you've got beef bones, you'll want to roast them first. Um, water, aromatics, uh, you know, any kind of herbs or sort of seasonings. Um, I use some vinegar, apple cider vinegar, and your veggie scraps. Helps, uh, you know, add some more flavor and nutrition. Step one, add it all to your pot. Step two, add water, uh, make sure it's all covered. Step three, uh, I cook it in the Instapot for about 120 minutes on high pressure. 
Uh, the nice thing about the Instapot is it can like go and once it's done it'll just be like automatically go to like keep warm and so I could like start it and leave it overnight or if I'm running out of the house and start it um, and then whenever I come back let you know uh, by that point it's probably released naturally really released its pressure naturally um, and then I can just strain it uh, step four uh, I take out all the extra stuff and then step five you start straining it I use I like using a little strainer and cheesecloth um, you can either strain it into a bowl and then put it in jars or whatever you want to put it in or I've got a funnel now to go straight into the jars careful you don't spill it like I often do and then put it in your jars or whatever you want and uh, let it cool and then you can freeze it or use it within that week uh, for whatever you want to cook with so there you go very straightforward I feel like it's very approachable uh, onion cutting tips Minna uh, my favorite way uh, one, one of my favorite tools in the kitchen is my ulu board that feels like a sponsor but uh, it's like basically like this sort of wooden block that has a, like an inverted dome yeah really um, it's nice because it's really nice for cutting onions because it kind of keeps it contained um, when I'm doing broth I just quarter it when I'm dicing it, I don't know how to explain it with um without like showing you, but I'll cut it in half from the root, and then I'll cut it like along one side, and then cut it along and like you know chop it one way, like have the half on the you know sort of flat side down, cut along one way, and then cut along the other way and that chops it pretty dices it pretty well I think let's see for long-term cooking of onions it doesn't matter how you chop it yeah 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 for the bone broth doesn't really matter if you're dicing it I do it how I described um yeah because when it's being cooked that long it doesn't really matter yeah a twitter thread would be great all right I'll try and do a twitter thread or I'll probably what I'll probably do is uh see if I can um just have this as a little document or something you can download and have it in the description of this video and as well on Twitter I'll see if I can do both you're very talkative yeah mm -hmm. okay. let's see <laughs> could fuse ooga booga yeah that's him the onion is kicking your butt onion cutting tips Minna maybe I should do a video for you guys would that help um Oh, another tip, especially like, you know, the eye, you know, <laughs> the way the onion uh, messes with your eye. I think it's when you cut at the root, there is this one, like the gas or whatever releases that makes your eyes water. So what I do is I'll cut the ends off of the onion and take the peel off and I'll stick it in the freezer for a little bit while I prep whatever other stuff I'm cooking. And then I'll take it back out and cut it. And that helps a fair bit keeping the like eye owie stuff. Um, like the freezer kind of neutralizes it a little bit. So there's one tip. Oh yeah. Really? What? What do you have to say? All right, let's see. I'm gonna... I'm gonna look back at what you were saying while I was giving my presentation to see if there's anything I missed. Oh, really? I'm also thinking, I guess it's already 11.30, but uh, it's been a while since I've done any karaoke, so I was thinking of throwing in some karaoke at the end. Uh, but first, please, 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 ask me your broth questions. Um, do you guys feel like it's, like, do you feel like it's overwhelming to try and think about doing broth, or do you guys feel like it's approachable like do you guys like one out of ten I don't know maybe one out of five one out of five do you guys think you'll try and make broth in the near future uh cut it pole to pole yeah yeah I guess so cut it like along the pole so then like the ringlets are kind of stacked on top of each other and then I cut on like sort of the outside and I like chop it from the outside, or like one side to the other, uh, with the grain maybe? I don't know if that makes sense. And then I'll turn it and I'll chop, the second way I'll chop is like 
parallel with the uh, where I chopped the roots, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it this week. Woohoo! You go, uh, Foxy Roxy. Five, you think you're gonna do it? Woo -woo. Let's see. Uh, Long, yes, I believe in you. Petrodon. I think, uh, I think, yeah, you can do it. I believe you guys. It's fairly easy. Sometimes in my household we accidentally make broth. Yeah, I mean, technically broth, if we go back to this other slide, technically broth is just the drippings from basically when you're cooking. Um, described as, oh, wrong one. You know, described as having is meat simmered in water, typically with other vegetables and stuff. So, uh, I save that and use it in gravies. I decay about near future, but it seems worth a try. I think it is, and I think you can do it. Uh, Instapot makes it really, really easy, in my opinion. Um, but you can do it otherwise, too. Uh, can you use a pressure cooker on the stove instead of an Instapot? I uh, love my pressure cooker. Yeah, I mean, if you've got, like, if you got one of the old-fashioned pressure cookers, like you use for canning, um, I mean, basically, an Instapot's an Insta basically an electric pressure cooker, so you could do it that way. Uh, you know, just make sure, you know, got all your liquid and, you know. Like, I feel like people are so scared of pressure cookers and, like, I don't know why people are so scared of the Instapot. It really, really baffles me. I don't know if part of it is, like, uh... Uh, bread mom was like way ahead on that train and had like a but you know had an instant pot before it became cool and then now she has like three um because they're really handy you can make like especially certain ones you can make yogurt in it's really easy for dinners they're just really nice i don't understand why people are scared of them like but like how would you make one explode like people are afraid they're gonna explode but why are they afraid it's gonna explode? I've been using like I don't I don't understand why people are so scared of it. And then like I've I've left like I, I feel comfortable leaving my like Instapot like unattended. Whereas like if you're pressure canning or pressure cooking like traditionally with like the pot on the stove, like people are scared of pressure canning, which I really, really need to I, I, like I want to have more broth like that's the reason I got into pressure canning is because I want to have more broth available and I don't have a lot of freezer space so I really like and you can technically it's like pressure canning is the way to like I don't know there's rebel canning that's like well water bath can uh but technically you're supposed to like pressure can broth and I want to have more broth on hand um but if you're like aware of it like there's safety mechanisms for the like the pressure canner cooker on the stove and if you're around and aware of it and keeping an eye on it, like, it shouldn't go bad. Like, things should be fine. You should be able to catch it. I, I don't know. I don't understand the fear. Why is there so much fear that it's stopping people from, like, doing these things? I'm, I'm also just really biased to the spot because I love it. <laughs> not that they will explode. People have used pressure cookers uh, to cause bad explosions and people now associate pressure cookers with explosions. I feel like if you like put a pressure cooker on and like left the kitchen for hours then yeah something might happen. I don't know. I feel like if you're like aware of it and keeping an eye on it and there's then like understand like what you're supposed to do then it shouldn't explode. I feel like there's there's safety measures in place where it's like if the pressure built up too much and it just like you know I don't know I don't know I'm, I'm still fairly new I might not know what I'm talking about I just think people are like it's like it's stopping you it's stopping you from doing cool stuff like if you're worried about it you know take the precautions like learn learn about it and like be smart I guess but don't let the fear of it stop you uh Use a crock pot? Yep, yep, absolutely. Over here on slide number... Where is it? I think it was slide number... Four? Nope, not number four. Where was it? 
Nope. Which one was it? Oh, oh. Here we go. Oh, crock pot. Uh, I have not used a crock pot to make it. Uh, but I know many people who have. And I think you can basically just like do it overnight. Uh, looks like uh on low for eight to ten hours in the crock pot. You're right, uh, actually, pressure cooker is not that hard to use. Yeah, like, so I borrowed my friend's canner, uh, like, earlier this fall or summer, uh, and canned some broth, and it was really exciting. Um, and, like, I sat, and I read through the manual, and I'm like, okay, makes sense, you know, kind of understood what I was supposed to do, you know, watched some videos, and, like, I don't know, it's not scary, guys. It's really not scary. You, you just... Follow the instructions. <laughs> and like, in the manual it described like, it had like a safe, I feel like a couple safety features to like, relieve the pressure if it got too much. I feel like a, a lot of human invention history is just like controlling boiling water <laughs> and steam. It's a lot you can do with it. Uh, just made a bunch with beef in it. Mmm, delicious. I tend to have... I tend to do chicken just because it's easy to, like, roast the chicken and get bones. Uh, but a good beef broth, uh, or beef bone broth is delicious. Broth is something I need to start. Making a Texas red chili, uh, that would be much better with homemade stock. Mmm, that would be delicious. You can do it! I believe in you! Do it! Tag me when you do it too. I want to see it. I think I have like a like Minna cooking tag or something. I need to make sure it's properly in my my profile. And tag me in the things you guys make. Just just beef, salt, and Worcestershire sauce. Good stuff. I enjoyed it mixed with rice and butter today. Mmm, that sounds really good. Very filling. That's the nice thing about broth is like. It, it really is like sustains you much better like having a good soup like having a soup with good broth in it is so much more like filling and satisfying or even just anything with a good broth in it because it's got the good stuff that your body needs uh, we have one it doesn't explode but your broth will be expelled to the ceiling if you forget you left it on I mean yeah yeah <laughs> Like, as, as long as you, like, make sure, you know, if you're going to be using it, you know, plan some other things to do in the kitchen. You know, clean up around the kitchen or something while it's cooking so that you don't forget about it. I feel like it's when you forget about it is when bad things happen. But if you stay in the kitchen or where you can hear and see it, then I, I don't think you, you have anything to worry about. Have you ever used pickled onions in broth? Uh, I found out how to do that when I visited Romania. Mmm. That sounds good probably add some good flavor to it. I bet the the sort of probiotics, well no, if it's pickled then it's the vinegar. That was something I didn't realize till recently where pickling is preserving the stuff in uh, vinegar whereas fermenting is uh, using like a salt water to uh, ferment it and basically let it make its own vinegar. Um, I, you know, I've got some, what is it? Radishes? Not radishes, beets. I have some beets that uh, I grew this summer and I tried, I forget if I pickled or fermented them. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, but I just kind of winged it and it didn't really turn out that great. And they've been sitting in the back of the fridge and I haven't figured out what to do with them. So maybe I'll try doing them, putting them in a broth just to, you know, maybe put them to some use. We'll see how it goes. Oh, no, this isn't just broth, just made actual beef. Oh, it produces, oh, 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 oh okay, I, I, I say beef. Oh, you made, you made the yummy beef and the, the drippings made a, a nice little catching of broth. Gotcha. Mm hmm love me some broth, me too, me too. I need to find out if I can bring a mini propane stove with me uh, trucking so I can cook burgers on the road and avoid the fast food assembly line grease, yeah. Yeah, that's, it's tough when you're, like, traveling a lot. Um, one thing that might help, you know, uh, is make, like, a, a nice 
bean salad uh, is a nice uh, thing that you can just keep cold and taste delicious where it's like some black beans, um, some corn, throw in some green onions, maybe like a diced like tomato or red pepper, and then I've made like a little sort of salad dressing with um, olive oil and like salt, pepper, and like cumin. Yeah, maybe maybe some like look up like cold lunches or things like that where you can have them packed in a cooler and they keep pretty well and then you've got something um you know something to eat because yeah I mean I don't know sometimes fast food's fun but I feel like more and more I'm like I get fast food I'm just like ugh my body just feels like bleh like all the poofas and all the like it's the poofas isn't is in the grease like it's it's the bad fats it's the poofas it's the is the bleh, grease you know whereas if you have like a good quality butter that fat's good that fat's great for you <laughs> when i make chicken noodle soup i always boil a whole chicken first to get the broth on oh, none of that canned stuff it's a good way to do it get you some good stuff make you a good uh noodle soup it's delicious mm. Let's see, I haven't been able to find jarred onions in years, though. Hmm. I'm not sure if I've ever seen jarred onions before. I wonder if they were, like, pickled onions or fermented onions. I've seen... I don't know, I know I've made, like, some pickled red onions before. Pickled... I made some pickled kale stems, too, which was really good. I use pickled and fermented interchangeably. See, that's what I did too until I realized the difference. Uh, because the the, dif the big difference, a lot of times they taste very similar, but the uh, the big difference is the the fermented stuff has the uh, probiotics. That are, again, really good for your gut. Uh, and like where pickling is just the vinegar and it, you kind of do it straight away, maybe put it in the fridge for a couple days and it's good. Fermenting takes, you know, you know, a week or two to do it. So since I found out that difference, I've, I was like, oh, there, that's a big difference now. Nah, I'm, now, nah, I'm hungry. You're hungry? It always happens. My streams always make people hungry because I'm always talking about food. Uh, Minna, I'm a deviled egg master. Would you like to know my secret to the best deviled eggs? Oh, I would absolutely love to know that BS. <laughs> I would love to know your secret. I do. I feel like I love deviled eggs, so I feel like sometimes they take a while to make. I don't know if it's just like the peeling and like cutting and mixing part of it, but it's always yummy. So much food tastes like sawdust ever since I started cooking. <laughs> Yeah, you, you reach a certain level in cooking where you're like, you go out to a nice rest, even just a, like a nice restaurant, and you're like, that was nice, but I could have made that. <laughs> especially, especially once you can like source really good ingredients. Like it's, you know, you learn to cook and you know, that's one step. And then you start finding like, I don't know, I feel like especially with kids, you know, once the family started, and I'm like, man, I want to take care of everyone. I want everyone to have good, nutritious food. And so then started digging, digger, and digging di deeper and deeper into like, okay, like, what can I do? Like, what, you know, what's the best option? What's in, you know, accepting that I'm not going to be able to do like, it, it's impossible, especially this insane and age, just because it's, it's not set up for it anymore to like, have all the good things that I wish I could have and it takes time to like build your own like sources and all that kind of stuff and you know sometimes you're in a phase of life where it's like things are really busy and you just you know gotta do the best you can um but it's definitely become a passion like trying to find and do the best I can food wise just because like it's you know plays such a huge role in your quality of life really Though your ideas are great, I'm a picky eater and basically a carnivore. Uh, I have a meat during every meal, but breakfast. Uh, I can cook a nice burger. Hmm, let's see. What's a good cold... Mm, I mean, some good sandwiches. Pack some, some good cold sandwiches. Might be good. Or another good thing is um, if you make some broth and you put it in a thermos... 
um, you can sip on that while you're driving and, you know, helps stretch out between meals. Uh, or, you know, help kind of help keep you topped off so you don't get too hungry on the road. That might help. I do love me a good warm, warm sipping broth. Mm -hmm, let's see. Uh, let's see. Okay, so for the uh, the egg, deviled egg secret that you are so kindly sharing with us all. Let's see, you need to use uh, Hungarian paprika. Hmm, interesting. Uh, you can usually find Sedzig brand in a lot of stores. Uh, if you use honey mustard, I use, uh, if I use honey mustard, I use hot paprika. Interesting. Uh, if I use spicy mustard, I use sweet paprika. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, when you blend the yolks uh, with the mustard and mayo, keep it in the bowl. Do not move it to the bag to squeeze it. You must spoon it into the eggs. I think I've only ever spooned it. Maybe once I've squeezed it through a bag. Uh, spooning it into the eggs preserves the fluffiness and texture you gave the yolk mix when you blended it together. Uh, and when you add paprika to top it at the end, tap the container gently to spread it. Mm. Man, now I want deviled eggs. Thank you, thank you for your tip. I'll have to try that next time I make deviled eggs. Also, another shout out to the Instapot. It's really easy to make deviled eggs, in, or uh, boiled eggs in the Instapot, like, or hard cooked eggs or whatever. Um, there's like a really easy method to do it, and as long as you like, take it out at the right time, don't let it overcook, um, they cook really nice. And I feel like that's like, always like a hit like a home run on being able to peel it easily. <laughs> I hope that this helps. Uh, please feature it sometime if you like. All right, I will. If uh, if I get the chance to try it, I'll have to do that. I know right now eggs are like expensive, <laughs> uh, but I'll, I'll probably make deviled eggs sometime regardless. I want everyone to learn the beauty of well-made deviled eggs. Mm. What what else like uh? I feel like I always wing it when I make deviled eggs. Like the proportion, you know, the proportions of like, do you add anything else like salt? I feel like a, one way I would make deviled eggs a lot is mostly just like, usually add mayonnaise to it too, right? Man, it's been a while since I've made them. I feel like there's usually mayonnaise or something and I would put relish in it. Nope, just eggs, mustard, mayo, and paprika, okay. Do you have like a, a race, specific ratio or like just to do the right consistency? Like, you know, same amount of mayo and mustard or like mainly mayo with a bit of mustard? How do you judge it? But yeah, one of my favorite ways was just putting relish. Uh, like mixing, mixing the uh, egg yolks and everything with relish. Yolk mix is yolk of the egg, mustard, and mayonnaise. Uh, you want slightly more mustard than the mayonnaise. Okay, interesting. Uh, about half is the yolk. Uh, but mostly you just want, uh, just feel out the consistency. You want it to be firm. Okay, makes sense. I think I always use mustard as just like a little touch at the end. I'll have to try it doing, uh, doing, you know, a good, a good amount of mustard. I make them with the same ingredients as I do for egg salad. It's basically just without the whites. Yeah, that's true. Uh, man, there's this one recipe I made all the time. Um, that was a nice way to like um, sort of meal prep. Make a big batch of this uh, egg salad and use it on sandwiches and stuff. I would put like bacon in it and if I had chives or maybe parsley and you know some Dijon mustard and a little bit of mayo. It was really yummy. Good night, Mina and Children's. I am off to bed. Have fun with the rest of the stream. And good night to other people. Good night, Captain Tinker Joe. Thank you so much for joining us. And I hope you have a good rest tonight and a good day tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Alright, so for half of that is the mustard mayonnaise. You want two-thirds of it to be mustard. Gotcha, gotcha. Alright. Ah, sweet. Did anyone have any more broth questions? Otherwise, we might. I'm, I'm enjoying chit chatting. The uh, the doe baby <laughs> is finally chilled out and sleepy. 
so that's good. <laughs> I can I can talk without being interrupted now. Ah, how does one use broth? Ah, how? I mean, possibilities are almost endless. Uh, main way, of course, is soup. Um, you could also use it in like casseroles or in cooking your rice, uh, or you know, you probably wouldn't want to do it in anything that you were like dumping the water out of, um, like noodles, but uh, anything that absorbs it. I guess technically you could use it in like oatmeal, but I prefer either water or milk to use in my oatmeal. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of ways you can use it. Uh, and especially a good homemade broth, you're absorbing and getting all those good minerals and uh, nutrients from it. Yeah, pretty much anything that uses water. Mm -hmm. And a drinking it. Uh, most of the time, if I most of the time I most broths I I don't make to drink. I like they they taste pretty good. Uh, but if I'm making a a sipping broth, I, I do it a little bit differently. Um, Fairly, you probably just look up like a sipping broth recipe, but I, I put more like flavors into it, like uh, like the mushrooms and maybe like ginger. Um, there's the what is it called? There's that one like sort of spice seasoning thing. Um, I think it's used in like licorice that I recently got and started like trying out in broths. What is it called? It's like Arisen or Arisen? Asin? Something like that. Uh, and I remember like smelling it. I'm like, this reminds me of something. And then I finally realized it reminds me of licorice. I didn't realize that like that was sort of the licorice smell. Alright, uh, yeah. It ain't, ain't it? Uh, Asnes? Anas? Something like that. It's, it's like a little, shaped like a little star. But man, it's so good. It's worth trying. It's worth trying at least once and, you know. You know, I, I encourage all of you, try it. Try it at least once. Uh, maybe try it a couple times if you feel like you need to get the hang of it. And, um, even if you only have it here and there, or save it for when you're sick, or for, like, a special occasion, or if you really want to make a yummy meal, go for it. Give it a try. Like, uh, oh, oh here we go. Aniz. 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 Aniz? Hang on. Let me do my handy dandy. This thing, yep. Pronunciation. Let me figure out how to do this. Is it gonna work? Mm, I can't hear it. Anas? Anas? Hmm, maybe? I don't know. Oh well. Accent the first syllable. It's the star shaped one. <laughs> I'll just call it the star shaped one. Uh, best tip I have for chat about broth is don't throw away any veggies or meats or bones. You can freeze any left and use later in the base for a broth. Exactly, yep. Just have like a dedicated uh, bag in the freezer that you throw your scraps in when you're, you know, cooking, and then just use it in broth. And then, you know, that also stretches your dollar a long way. Like, it's, you're, you're throwing out the potential when you throw stuff out. Um, which is understandable. Sometimes you don't have time. You're like, eh, I feel overwhelmed, whatever. I have, like, a compost I throw things on. Uh, but just know, like, you could be throwing that stuff in a bag in the freezer and later boiling it in water and then not only are you like 
you know, what could have been in the trash is now like a very nutrient dense uh, and delicious and flavorful broth that you can use in your own cooking. And the more you know. I can put dollars in water to make broth? No. No. You gotta put bones. Bones in water to make broth. The chub bucket? Is that what that means? I, I think of Spongebob when I hear the chum bucket. <laughs> Was it, did that used to be like the, the name for like the, the stock of the, all the broth? <laughs> My pipkin makes it impossible for me to eat broths for soup, uh, but at least I can use this uh, to make some for others. Yeah, that's a, that's a sweet way to look at it. Do you like um, things like rice? You could always, as, as someone else pointed out, you gotta use a little bit more water. Add in some more water, or a bit more liquid. Um, but you can, uh, you could cook things in the broth that you enjoy so that you can get the benefits of the broth um, if you don't enjoy the, uh, the soup aspect of it. Maybe it will be dirt and cocaine flavor. No. <laughs> I tried saving bones for broth making in the freezer, uh, but ended up throwing them out. It, it happens sometimes. There's, There's been many times in my escapades in the kitchen where I have grand plans for something and it falls through and ends up rotting or I end up tossing it anyway. And you know, it, it is what it is. You can always try again. Uh, is there any bone type you would never try? Um, I don't think so. Um, I made broth out of... Um, what's it? Shrimp shells? I had like, we had had a ton, we had like a ton of shrimp one time, uh, and we froze all the shells, and I made a broth out of it, and just looked up a recipe and made it. It was very strong smelling though, and I think you actually like sauteed the shells a little bit at first, and then did it, and the, the smell, like it wasn't a bad smell, but it was a very strong smell of like seafood. Uh, but I have like, I don't know. I want to say like eight cups right now of like basically like seafood broth and I need to look up a recipe to use it in because like I don't want to use it in just like any recipe. I feel like it needs to be paired with the seafood since it smelled and probably tasted so strongly of seafood. Um, but no, I think if I, if I have bones available, I mean, I might as well use them. Mm -hmm. Rinse your rice before cooking it. Yep, another great tip. You can rinse it. Sadly, it's not, uh, taste. I just throw it for some reason. Oh, I'm sorry about that, uh, Celis. Is it, like, the homemade broth? Or just, like, any broth? Mm -hmm. Uh, best bones for broth are bones with marrow, uh, but any type work. Yeah, the marrow definitely helps a lot. Um, mainly you want, you know, the bones and as much, like, kind of cartilage and connective tissue. Um, so like on the chicken, you know, keeping some of the skin or, you know, the chicken has a lot of cartilage bits. Uh, if I had, I haven't had rabbit in a while, uh, but you could use that for broth too. Uh, good night, Eric. Thank you so much for coming to the stream and I hope you have a great night. I think, uh, <laughs> eat the Pippa. No, no, it wasn't Pippa. It was just a rabbit. <laughs> I've, had, I've had quite a few rabbits in my life. We used to raise rabbits and eat them. It was a good time. My, uh, my favorite way to eat rabbit is, um, uh, rice and rabbit and okra. We used to, uh, grow some okra, too, and we throw it all together. It was delicious. How do you recommend cooking Pippa? I don't recommend you cook my Oshi, my mama. Don't cook Pippa. Leave her alone. I'm talking about other rabbits. Not VTubing rabbits. Just rabbits. Specifically New Zealand rabbits. This is delicious. So anyway. For those of you that are night owls like me and still hanging out. What do you think about a song or two? Should we try a little bit of karaoke? 
Why can't we cook the C Pippa Crazy Rabbit? Because I said so! Leave my mama Pippa alone. It'd be sad to don't. We need Pippa around. We'd be sad without her. No cooking Pippa. Just because I cooked rabbit's neck doesn't mean you can cook any rabbit. Okay? Do you, do you get a chat? No, no cooking Pippa. I do not endorse this. <sighs> the rabbit is great. Should have seen my sister's face when I fed her kids rabbit. <laughs> I don't know if that would be a bit cruel if you like tricked them into it. <laughs> no, no cooking any YouTuber rabbits. All right. No chat, no cooking VTuber rabbits. If they can talk, you can't eat them, okay? That's the rule. And, like, gagging them so they can't talk doesn't count either. They can't be sentient, like, that sentient, but they they can't be, v no, v no eating VTubers, okay? Have you had cow tongue? I have, yes, it's delicious. Uh, I remember, I think I was only... Maybe some of the other cows we didn't get the tongue back, but I remember specifically one of the cows we were quite, you know, brought to the butcher and was like, hey, give, make sure you give us the tongue. Um, and like, cow tongues are super rough. Uh, you know, imagine like a cat's tongue, like this kind of sandpaper, but like times 10. Uh, but I think you peel that part off and then, you know, what's left is basically like a pure muscle that is so soft, so delicious. Uh, and we made like a soup with it. And I remember there was the little like chunks and you could kind of still see like the bumpy part uh, of like what was under like the bumpy part of the tongue. Um, it was just so, it was so buttery soft, man. It was delicious. Delicious. Can I put Pippa next to the heater? She looks cold. Maybe give her a blanket. I don't know if I trust you putting the heater by her. I think you should just give her a blanket. Uh, I can't get past the texture. Cow tongue, tongue is chewy. Yeah. It's been so long since I've had it. Aw, uh, maybe a little bit chewy. I really enjoyed it. I would definitely eat it again. I really need it. I want to... I feel like the next, like, thing I want to get better at is either finding out how to, like, cook or incorporate organ meats. Because those those have so much good stuff in it. I know you can, like, dehydrate it fairly easily. Um. I, like, put it in stuff. But I'm not quite there yet. That's that's kind of the next thing I want to work on is figuring, well, I don't know. Kind of immediate next thing I want to work on is getting a canner and canning some more things. Um, also, a goal this year is to make some hard cheese. Um and you know kind of a longer you know more back of my mind thing is you know get better at eating organ meats uh or in, you know i don't know either figure out how to like cook it or incorporate it somehow chicken hearts and gizzards are good <sighs> see i don't know i've it's been a long since time since i've like tried them and i feel like i'd have to probably either cook them myself or i don't know kind of like psych myself up to try them again because they don't seem very appetizing but I know they're really good for you let's see cow tongue kind of sounds tasty it is I think that's what you said Ta taste yeah tasty let's see what are the best recipes for cannibals no I don't have any no cannibal recipes here you can move on. By the way, my heater is an oven. And by next to, I mean in. No! No chat. No cooking Pippa. We've been over this. No, 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 no. Can I make broth with fed boys? I mean, if you want to. Never thought somebody can spend a whole hour talking about chicken broth. Uh, something new every day. There's a lot to talk about. I gotta, I had a 
broth pill, you guys. I gotta try and convince you guys to make your own broth. You know, fight big food. Don't let them sell you four dollars for a carton of, like, salted water. You can do better than that. I believe in you, chat. <laughs> when Pippa was creating uh, the flavor designs, did you immediately think, that's me, when she first came up with Min's background? Uh, <laughs> Miliardo walked up and he was like, look, it's literally you. And I was like, huh, yeah, it is. And now here we are. <laughs> Uh, my mom would put turkey heart and neck in her turkey gravy. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times when I when I get a chicken to cook, uh, cause I, for cooking the chicken by the way, um, is I just get a whole chicken from the store. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, they have the, the gizzards and the heart and stuff. Um, and I'll, I'll let that cook with the chicken and like, you know, go into the drippings of the broth at the bottom. Cause the, the, technically the, just the broth is you know, the drippings from a meat that you've cooked. Um, and I won't eat them, but I'll, I'll have them cooked with it. So I usually take the chicken, put some salt and pepper on it, uh, put it in my Dutch oven, in the oven, um, I think for like 40 minutes with the lid on, and then maybe another like 15 or 30 minutes with the lid off. Uh, it makes a pretty good chicken. Uh, can we cook fish? Uh, yeah, fish broth. Uh, I've never made it. I don't know, like, if you want, like, just do the bones or if you, like, boil the fish or whatnot. Uh, but, uh, you can absolutely make, uh, fish broth. Uh, have you tried braised pig's feet? I have not. Uh, I saw a cool video someone sent me, um, a video by, uh, Life of Boys. Uh, where he basically made, like... He made it in like a jello ring and there was like meat shredded up in it, but he basically made like a jello broth where he like made a broth with like pig's feet and stuff and like shredded up some of the like pork meat and then put it into like a mold and with all the like good gelatin from the good broth, it made like, you know, a, a, a broth jello ring. <laughs> it looked fascinating and I want to try it. Um, someone was going to be processing pigs, some local pigs. Um... I need to I need to touch base and see if they're ready yet, so I can get some pig feet. So I want to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, people don't make their own broth. A stray wolf, you're in good company. Uh, I'm trying to convince everyone to make their own broth because <laughs> mm, it's delicious. I look forward to watching this pod. I like fighting big food. Right there with ya. I used ground beef from a butcher instead of a store and was surprised at the lack of water. Thanks, Walmart, adding water to my beef. It is, yeah, it is a lot different. Uh, I don't know, there's just... It's like, I don't know, it's hard to like pin down blame. It's just like everything slowly morphed into this, like... I don't know. It's it's hard to find real food, so I feel like everything's morphed and always has something added to it, or like processed or taken away. You know, and it's it's overwhelming sometimes. But you, I don't know. I feel like you can slowly, like piece by piece, try and like work your bag. You know, find find what's important to you and work on that, and you know, not get too caught up in you know all the details because that would be I feel like that would be kind of depressing to like if you're constantly stressed about oh my goodness there's like all the toxins and all the stuff around us which is like yeah it's true but I don't know I feel like you gotta pick your battles at a certain point and just do your best <laughs> no you cannot cook Sakana either no cooking VTubers chat no no we're going time out. Don't think I don't know how to handle rowdy, rowdy chatters. I'm trying to be silly. No cooking other VTubers. No, no. Not gonna happen. We can... <laughs> oh, I see what you were meaning, trying to cook a fish. Do not cook Sakana, okay? Pippa would be sad. Don't make Pippa sad. And also, like, Sakana wouldn't like that. You can't, you can't, mm -mm. no, no, no. He's a fish man. And I said, no cannibalism. 
So that counts. No cooking Sakuna. Too bad bread is the one thing I can't make. I do everything else. LOL. Well, I have, uh, what was it? I, it's, I guess it's been a little bit one now. I did a whole stream on making sourdough bread. Uh, so if you want to go, go check that out. Um, I really need to put together, finish putting it together with a little document, uh, and put that in the description of the video so that you've got like a little kind of step by step. I am I'm very obsessed with bread. Like I made, I made. Let's see. I, 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 ha I have to be careful though because then I like, I love bread, and then like, I make all this bread, and then my family is like, "Where's we've missed Minna? Minna, please come back." <laughs> uh so I'm trying to like do batches of bread, and so I'm only spending like one night out of the week, to, uh, you know, mixing everything. Um, but today I made a batch of uh, dinner rolls, and I made a regular batch of loaf bread, and I made two small loaves of um, potato bread, which is fun. You know, took some leftover mashed potatoes and put it in the bread. Uh, and then I actually have some bagels. <laughs> I gotta figure out, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm gonna be able to cook them tonight because it's kind of late. I don't know, I might, mm, I don't know, maybe I will. Uh, I made some bagels and that dough is much stiffer and thicker and so I left it longer to rise more. Um, and then I shaped them like a couple hours ago so they've probably risen by now and I need to, to do bagels you like drop them in boiling water for like a minute and then bake them. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to try and do that, or if I'm going to somehow try and put the pans in the fridge until the morning. But la like, so one time I did that with cinnamon rolls, and like, it took a while for the roll, like the rolls like deflated, like the cinnamon rolls kind of deflated a little bit from the cold, and then it took a while for them to like expand again, so I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm going to try and cook the bagels tonight or not. Oh, you got that potato bread recipe you were looking for. Yeah, actually, I had a potato bread recipe um, already, and I, I just had the chance to finally try it. I, I had, technically, I tried the recipe before, but it had, like, I'd run out of my regular flour and used some whole wheat. I don't know, I haven't gotten the hang of whole wheat yet. I feel like I can't get the bread to rise as well with whole wheat. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing wrong. I like making quad batches of bread every two weeks. Uh, it takes a while for people to go through them. And it also freezes great. Um, I've started doing that more is, especially having like a bread sliced up so I can just grab like a couple pieces at a time and put in the toaster oven to warm up. Um, that yeah, batch cooking some bread and freezing it. A great way to uh, have some good bread on hand. Have you seen the Pepsi boiled crab between a whole baguette? I have not. I don't know if I want to. That's mmm. That sounds mmm. Nah. Can we put? What can we cook Cinnabon bun? No. Absolutely not. Go make some starter and cook your own cinnamon rolls. Leave my girl alone. I don't know how many times I gotta tell you guys, no cooking feed tubers, okay? Okay? And even though, like, it'd be fun to make, like, recipes that match, uh, you know, the different flavor talents, you know, inspired by, that doesn't mean you can cook them, okay? Okay? Her hair dough looks tasty. No! No, 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 no! I've made a bunch of, I tried making a bunch of sourdough recently. It kind of, uh, it's kind of sour. Any tips on how to make it, uh, more sour or less sour? Uh, I think the longer it ferments, the more sour sourdough will get. Um, and I know, I don't know if like having a lot of the fermentation happen in the fridge, uh, which definitely slows it down if that helps the like the flavor of it uh so far the bread i've made i haven't noticed it like a really sour taste 
Um, definitely, it, I don't know, it doesn't taste as sour as like store-bought sourdough. Um, I guess I probably let the bulk ferment go overnight. Like usually I'll, I'll, I'll have like my pre-ferment going and then I'll make the dough that night and then let it sit overnight, shape it, let it sit a couple hours, bake it. Um, so it's probably not more than like 12 hours of fermentation. Uh, and that's turned out really well. Mina, I have a question. Hot, uh, cakes, uh, hot cakes need eggs? I really don't know. I don't know either. Let me Google it for you. Hot cakes. Do hot cakes, hot cakes need eggs? Let's look. Cupcakes need eggs. Let's see. Like pancakes? Are, the, are, are hot cakes just pancakes? I usually use um, eggs and pancakes. I usually do waffles over pancakes though. Uh, let's see, it was on the food review stream. I kind of, oh, I kind of remember it. I didn't realize there was like Pepsi. Maybe, maybe I missed the video. I remember seeing a picture of like a crab in like a baguette and I was like, what's that? I so, said, yeah, I'm a little unsure about the whole pre-ferment process. I decided to wait till your uh, bread document is ready. I, I think it's ready. I just need to turn into a PDF. I'm really sorry. I've been really late on that, guys. Uh, I will try and make that happen soon as well as making my my little broth thing here, a PDF. The pre-ferment is just a fancy way of saying a specific amount of starter, uh, if that makes sense. So the, yeah, the pre-ferment is just the water and flour and the starter. And it's just basically measuring out like a specific amount and letting that fermentation start before you make your dough. Uh, so I'll mix that together in the morning uh, and let that sit, and then in the evening, I'll take that and mix the rest in to make it the dough. That's how I usually do it. If they don't want to be eaten, they should not have been made out of, named after food. <laughs> I mean, it's Pippa's fault that we're named after food, but that doesn't mean you can eat us, okay? Okay? Probably another image from Al. Yeah, he, he did send a lot of cursed stuff. <laughs> Unrelated, but do you think vanilla protein powder uh, would mix well with um, pilk or milk? Uh, I'm not sure what pilk is with milk, probably. You probably want like, it's hard to get like those protein powders to mix in well without like a blender or blender bottle. Can we make food shaped like flavor? If you want to. I made bread shaped like my mama Pippa. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> little Pippa head. Uh, what's the difference between pancakes and wheat cakes? I don't know. Let's Google it. What's the... Oh wait. Was it listening to me? Wait, there's pancakes and hot cakes. Let's do wheat cakes. Is it just different ways of saying it? We should probably do... I, I still want to do karaoke. Maybe we'll still do karaoke. Hang on, maybe we'll do that next. What's the difference between pancakes and... Uh, wheat cakes. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see. Uh, what's the difference? Let's see. There... It looks like... What's this one say? Okay. Maybe this one? This one seems like the article. See what it says. Pippa obviously wants us to though. Why else would she do it? 
I don't know, because food is fun and cute, not because you need to eat it. I am tempted to try nomming on Minta. No, leave her alone. Don't eat my my friends. Pep, pep Pepsi milk? Hang on, Pepsi milk? That new monster plus. Mm -hmm. What do you guys? Why do? You, why are you guys adding these to milk? Ugh. Literally shivering at that. Ooh. Pepsi milk. Um. <laughs> Eating VTubers to gain their pop popularity and power. <laughs> no. Pil no. Pilk. That just sounds gross. Sometimes also pickles. No. I have seen some interesting things done with like pickle juice, but. Oh, monster making an alcoholic wine BD tub. What? I'm not. I'm. Uh, I don't know. Maybe if I started drinking Monster Susan would let me be a gamer. <laughs> I'm not that big into energy drinks. I've had like a bang here and there. That's it. Alright, let's see. What does this say? Alright. Uh -huh. Okay. Flap flapjacks versus pancakes versus hotcakes. So it doesn't say wheat cakes. What is a hotcake? Hotcake is another name for pancakes, both in the US and in the UK. What is a pancake? Pancake is a thin in the UK or thick in the US cake made on a griddle or frying pan. It's funny that these things are called cake when um like cake as we think of it now is like seems so different, but if like if you think about it, I feel like most like the artisan bread, like sourdough artisan bread, where it's like just the water, flour, and salt. Probably was your like everyday stuff, and it was more rare to like spare some like butter or some sugar to make bread, to like add into your bread. And so, I don't know, it's an interesting thing to think about of like what this perspective was, where it's like the stuff that's our everyday bread is what used to be considered like the special stuff, you know? Like the, the cake. Was a flapjack uh, is another name for pancakes in the U.S. In the U.K., flapjacks refer to a baked bar prepared from rolled oats and brown sugar. Interesting. Okay. It didn't tell us what a wheat cake was, though. I think I tried uh, Sprite plus high C before. I could see that. That doesn't seem that weird. Adding stuff to milk. Though, like adding soda to milk? Hmm. Sugar was expensive, so they used fruits to make fruit cake. Yep, yep. I'm actually kind of, I was thinking this holiday, I didn't do it this holiday, but I'm like, you know, I kind of want to make fruit cake. Because it's probably much better than whatever they, <laughs> fruit cake from like, that I've tried before from the store tastes gross. But I bet if I made it, it would taste much better. Aw, uh, same with like stuffing. I was realizing that at Thanksgiving, like I'd had a, a bread that hadn't risen as well and I was not as like excited to eat it. And so I was like, oh, I'll chop it up and make stuffing. Um, and I was like, you know what, that's, you know, well, there's probably so many things that we like do specifically like, you know, like, oh, I'm gonna make stuffing. So I'm gonna take the bread and like chop it up and stuff. Where it's like, it was the way to use up like leftovers or like, less than stellar food, you know? I just drink milk. I need me some fresh milk. Fresh milk is where it's at. Uh, also like some tea and coffee. Sometimes tea doesn't sit well with my stomach though. Like I feel like I, there's many times where I'm like, I want tea, but then like my stomach doesn't like it for some reason. Have you heard of milk soda? It's a very popular drink in Korea. Hmm. I don't know, maybe I'm hating on it too much. It's just the idea of like Pepsi and milk seems so strange. A carbonated milk seems kind of strange. I don't know, but then again, like what Korea came up with bubble tea, <laughs> or it's mainly from there, and I like that, so maybe I'll give it a try. VTuber milk is the best milk. I'm pretty sure I'm the only VTuber with milk. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else does, <laughs> but isn't you guys can't have it. <laughs> 
I get that with thicker tea. Uh, thin lemon tea is great. Mmm, yeah. I have to, like, identify which, uh, which things were actually, like, messing with me. Uh, it's called milk coffee. Uh, milk teas? Uh, milk, milkies? Milk, milkies? Uh, I've had it. Uh, give it a chance. Okay, but if I am able to come across it, maybe I will. Very exclusive distribution. Yeah, only one individual gets this milk. <laughs> All right, karaoke time. Karaoke time. Let's sing a song. Uh, what should I sing? What should I sing? Any requests? Did anyone catch on Yana's concert tonight? That was so fun. She did a really great job with it. I love it. Like. She picked a lot of, like, her, her voice went so well with, uh, so many of the songs. I think my favorite was the, uh, one from Tokyo Ghoul, she sang. That one, that one, like, mm, hit real nice. You could feel the passion. And the emotion. Lullabies could be great, huh? Mama Minna tucks you in. Let's see. Here, I was looking up what the uh, the wheat cakes were. Wheat cakes for Mr. Mayor. Oh, huh. It's a Homer thing? Huh. Cartoon cuisine. Ooh. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder what else they have. Want, want more wheat cakes, Mr. Mayor? Read my lips, yes. Dad, you got syrup on your sash. Uh, no problem. Hmm. It's alright, then. I wonder, okay, so... But, so is it just pancakes with uh, butt wheat? Buck, buck wheat? But, buck wheat? Buttermilk? Oh, and some molasses. Okay. Okay. So it's kind of like a like a whole grain pancake. Got it. Okay. That's what the wheat cake is. What other recipes? Huh. Interesting. I'll have to look at that later. Alrighty. Ooh. Cranberry Zombies. I like that song. Uh, problem is, like, Doe Baby's sleeping, and to sing that, I'd have to, like, really project. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe? In your head, in your head, zombie, 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 what's in your head, in your head, zombies, zombies, zombie. That might be fun. I bet I could do it. Okay. Uh, I might, let me see if I, I could, let me see if I can, uh, switch out, um, to my karaoke mic. So I will be, be right back. Just a moment. Be right back.
touching touch sorry sorry yes All right, I think we're good. Um, and then I think I just need to look up, then I think I, I just need to look up the uh, um, karaoke, I think, right? Yeah. All right, there we go. Everyone say thanks to Beer Man and all his technical support. <laughs> all right, I think we're ready. Okay, yeah, I think we're ready. I just gotta, I gotta remember to be right here with the microphone. Woo. <laughs> all right, so let's. <laughs> He really, he's the, the, the mastermind behind this. I'm, I'm good at making bread. <laughs> I'm not good at the technical stuff. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Here, let me, uh, I'll go ahead and that disappear for now and get my music. All right, coming through good? Are you ready, chat? I think I'm ready. Let's see. All right, all right, let's see. Let's give it a try. <clears throat> Here, we'll do a quick test. Make sure uh, the audio sound good. And then we'll go for it. Okay, fix the setting. I think we're good now. Do do do. Ready to sing. Hopefully, I won't wake up, do baby. Okay, so thank you for uh, 
uh, waiting so patiently while we uh, made sure all the technical things were alive. <laughs> all right. All righty. Let's go for it. have lyrics I guess that makes sense let me look up the lyrics <laughs> do, 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 do. let me grab the lyrics I don't think this one's technically a karaoke I think it's just the uh, the acoustics but I think I'd rather sing to the acoustics This is fun, just hanging out, doing whatever. Let's see here. Okay, got the lyrics. We'll start this back a little bit. <laughs> Thanks for hanging on, chat. Thanks for hanging out with me, I really appreciate it. I'm glad you guys are here with me. <laughs> You're supposed to have the lyrics in your head. Yeah. <laughs> Funny, funny, funny joke. Funny joke. Okay. Uh, third time's the charm. Here we go. Head hangs lonely. Child is slowly taken. And the violence calls our silence Who are we mistaken? What you see, it's not me It's not my family In your head, in your head They are fighting With their tanks and their bonds Oh! <laughs> I should have realized. <laughs> I just looked up the acoustic and not the karaoke. I looked up the karaoke and I was like, oh, look, there's an acoustic karaoke. But nope, it was just the acoustic. <laughs> Let's just go with the karaoke then. <laughs> funny, funny. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Let's do it again. <laughs> it's all good. <clears throat> okay, here we go. All right. Some intro. Sing King Karaoke. That's what we're doing. Zombie. The Cranberries. Who are we 
mistake me But you see, it's not me It's not my family In your head, in your head They are fighting With their tanks and their bombs And their bombs and their guns In your head, in your head They are crying In your head song, but yeah, it's sad. It's still fun to sing though. I think that's just a nice uh, guitar solo, drip. <laughs> Slightly scuffed, fully baked. Yep, that's me! There's maybe been one stream where I haven't had scuff. Maybe one. <laughs> Alright, what else should I sing? Let's do let's do another song. I'm having fun. <laughs> let's do another song. I could try let's see, what could I try? <laughs> More songs, chat. What else should I sing? It's been a minute since I did a karaoke. Oh, <gasps> hell to pay. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see if there's a karaoke. We'd be like the other side. <laughs> we get like the civilian side, and then we get the soldier side. <sighs> Let's see if there's a karaoke. Let's see. Is it the which which is the band? 
Which is the band that I'm looking for? I can't remember. <laughs> if you're thinking of keeping the food theme, you could sing one from Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> hmm. I, I know that band, but I don't know that band, you know? Like, I, I can't remember specifically the songs they have. Uh, Through the Fire and the Flames. Is that the, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, or is that a different one? Because I totally failed the last time I tried to sing the one from Hunchback of Notre Dame. And, uh, I don't know, I guess we'll see what I end up singing, and if we have to cut any of this out of the VOD, I guess we'll have to see, I don't know. Uh, that's Dragon. Veggie Tales? Yes! Okay, which Veggie? Okay, okay, okay. Veggie Tales. I definitely want to do a Veggie Tales. Maybe after this one. Okay, tell me, tell me which, let's see. I know, there were like five metal plans that made a hell to pay. Yes, which one am I looking for? Tell me which one I'm looking for. Ah, uh, Dragon Force. Which one's from Dragon Force? Oh, where is my hairbrush? That is like my theme here. I'm going to do that one first. Let's see if there's a karaoke of it. Oh, where is my hairbrush? Just then, Larry the Cucumber. That's shocked and slightly embarrassed. Let's see. Hairbrush. Here we go, karaoke. We got it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's go. Silly songs it is. And now it's time for Silly Don't songs do the Dragon and Force one? Okay. The part of the show where Larry comes out and sings sing. a silly song. A silly song. A curtain opens as Larry, having just finished his morning bath, is searching for his hairbrush. Oh. Having no success, Larry cries out. Oh, where is my hairbrush? Oh, where is my hairbrush? Oh, where, 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 oh, Eat my hair rush. Right? Having heard his cry, Park Ring right. enters the scene. Uh, enter the scene. Shocked and slightly, Shocked and slightly, slightly embarrassed at the sight of Larry and Towel. Park his composure and reports. There ends a... I think I saw, I think I saw a hair brush back, back there. Back there. Back there. Oh, there is my hair brush. Back there. Back there is my hair brush. Back there. 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 Is my hairbrush? Having heard his joyous proclamation, Joe <laughs> Asparagus enters the scene. Asparagus enters Shocked the scene. And Shocked and slightly embarrassed. Larry in a towel. Yeah, in a towel. Junior regains his composure Listen. and comments. Why do you need a hairbrush? Why do you need a hairbrush? You don't have any hair. Larry is taken aback. The thought had never occurred to him. Never occurred to him. No hair. No hair? What, could this, what could this mean? What will become of him? What will become of his hairbrush? Hair no oh. hair. Oh, hair. For my hairbrush. For my hairbrush. No. No hair for my hairbrush. No hair, 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 For my hairbrush. This is a lot harder to sing than I realize. I'm embarrassed at the sight of Larry's towel. So sure, he confesses. Larry, that old hairbrush of yours. Well, you never use it. You don't really need it. So, well, I'm sorry. I didn't know, but I gave it to the but peach. Because he's got hair. Because he's got he's hair. Got Larry stumbles back Larry stumbles. Not, fair. Not fair. Oh, my hairbrush. Oh, my hairbrush. Not fair. Not fair. My poor hairbrush. My poor hairbrush. Not fair. Not fair. No fair. No hair. Not fair. No hair. No hair. Not fair. No hair. Not fair. Not fair. My little hairbrush. Having heard his lament, the peach enters the scene. I love this part. Each other. Each other. Recognizing Larry's generosity, the peach is thankful. <laughs> they look Thanks so awkward. Hair, right? Thanks for the hairbrush. Yes, good has, yes, been, good done has been done here. Then there's and it exits the scene. Attachment to the hairbrush. Take care of my hairbrush. Take care of my hairbrush. Take care, take care of my hairbrush. I can't do of that. My of my hairbrush. See? End. I didn't realize how hard it was going to be 
trying to it was hard like I can do the first part but the second part and I don't know what's going to be next and so it totally trips me up so yeah there you go I feel like I'm always I'm always singing that song to myself when I lose my hairbrush all right All right, let's see. So what's next? Do, 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 do. <laughs> How do you guys like that one? The pirates who don't do anything, that one's a good one too. It's been so long since I've seen any Veggie Tales. I know. I, I, I don't know if they're still making them, but I mean, the classics are classics, you know? You know? All right, let's see. Which vegetable is it that has hair? It was the peach, because the peaches are fuzzy, so the peach had hair. Larry the cucumber did not have hair. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I found the, uh, the proper hell to pay one. Maybe we'll do that. Let's see here. Let's go over here. This one will be fun. I don't know. I'm not sure how, how much of this I'll, I'll uh, get right. Uh, I just like the chorus. I just like the chorus of this one. Because it's fun. Let's see. Do, 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 do. But yeah, it was really hard singing the, the fast part. I forget how fast that was. Or it's like, take care, don't wait. Okay, hang on. Okay, let's see. Let's see. I'm trying to get this one to open. Oh no! Oh, I've lost chat. I gotta make chat come back. Hang on. Gonna make chat come back. Let's see. Come back, chat. Gotta pop you guys back out. There we go. Okay. Let's see. It's only almost 1 a.m. <laughs> I can sing more. Let's see here. Oh, Rolling in the Deep. Oh, I, I used to sing that one. I remember at summer camp during like the talent show. I like really practiced that one and sang it. And it was like, like I felt like I did well, but I was like, I feel like this, this I'm doing this well and I hope it's good. So maybe I'll do that one next. Oh, after the health pay one. I need some Ferb song. That one's fun. I feel like I would be hard to keep up with that one, too. I feel like that one moves fast, too. The peach has a freaking mohawk. Yeah. <laughs> the very hairy peach. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, let's see. All right, here. Let me look it up this way. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. All right, pulling it back up. Pulling up the YouTube. <laughs> We're gonna see how this song goes. This will be a change, but it's gonna be fun. And then we'll do some, uh, what's it? What was I gonna say? Oh, then we'll do some Adele. Let's see, okay. I think, I think it's this one. Okay, let's try it. Let's try it, chat, let's do it. It's gonna be a surprise. What do you guys think it could be? What could I be singing? <laughs> if we got a Rickroll from Nyana, can we get one from you? Mm, maybe. 
Would I ever give you up or let you down? Okay, here we go. Oh wait, let me let me give look. I need to look at the lyrics. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> lyrics time. Because I don't think this one has karaoke. So let's do this. Oh, there's no results. What? Is there a lyric video? I want to do this one because I like the chorus. I want to sing the chorus. It's fun. Come on. Doesn't want to work. Come on. Oh, here we go. <laughs> This one's just gonna be silly, but I'm gonna go for it. See how fast this goes. But we got bomb bullet loose and hard of a wretched age. I breathe just a beat and bruise and devour burning rage. Gonna get mine, get out of my way. It's gonna be, gonna be, gonna be all the pain. Ha 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 ha. I'm a brutal fist, you lone wolf, I want a bread. I stand at the bones of titans and my wrath is burning blood. Get on your mind, get out of my way. There's gonna be, gonna be, gonna be okay. Click, click, boom, boom. Running, running, the drumming of the butt job pumping. Got molten metal in my veins. Click, click, boom, boom. The wrecking of the lead is coming. I'm kicking in the gates of hell. I'm kicking in the gates of hell again. Bringer of pain. I like the click click boom boom part. If you couldn't tell, that's my favorite. Do 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 do. Wake on swings of hell. Uh, I will split the planes. Bringer, bringer of pain. It's fun to like jam to this in the car. <laughs> it's hard to jam, it's loud when you're sleeping, baby. Let tear it, palm it into the road. Rip it, tear it. Gonna get mine, get out of my way. It's gonna be, gonna be, gonna be all the way. I'm gonna get mine, gonna be, gonna be, gonna be all the way. Click, click, boom, boom. Talking about the bumping, running. The drumming of the buckshot pumping. Got molten metal in my veins. Click, click, boom, boom. Sniffing and running, running. A wrecking of lead is coming. I'm kicking the gates of hell again. Bringer of pain. Do, 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 do. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. I don't know if I'm loud enough. <laughs> Trying to be too loud. Boom, boom, boom. Woo! I, d I just like the click, click, boom, boom part. It makes, I think it's fun. <laughs> What'd you think of that, chat? <laughs> Was that what you expected? <laughs> yeah, I think it is Doom music. Like, it literally, like, it has, like, the cover <laughs> of Doom on it. <laughs> All right, let's switch it up. <laughs> Uh, and do some Adele. <laughs> click, click, boom, boom. Minna Vanilla 2023. Yep. <laughs> click, click, boom, boom. It's just fun. It's a fun song. All right, let's see. Maybe we'll finish it here. Let's see. I need to do some more karaoke sometime. Maybe, well, I think we should probably finish it soon, though. Gonna wrap this up. <laughs> we can go in a minute. Let's see. 
Rolling in the deep. Let's see here. Rolling in the dough. <laughs> Metal loaf good. Woo! <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> Once again, uh, yeah, let's go. Let's go with this. <clears throat> I gotta, okay, wait, here, let me, <clears throat> let me adjust my voice. <laughs> Reaching the fever pitch, it's bringing me up the top. Okay, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Ooh, rolling in the deep, Adele, karaoke version. <clears throat> There's a fire starting in my heart Reaching a fever pitch and it's bringing me out the dark Finally I can see you crystal clear Go ahead and sell me out and I'll lay your shit bare See how I leave with every piece of you Don't underestimate the things that I will do there's a fire starting in my heart Reaching a fever pitch and springing me out the dark The scars of your love remind me of us They keep me thinking that we almost had it all The scars of your love, they leave me breathless I can't help feeling we could have had it all Rolling in the deep, you had my heart and soul. Then you played it to the beat. Hang on, just a second. Yeah, check something. Uh, quick, uh, I guess, iteration pause. Uh, one of the other doe babies needs me. Uh, so I will be right back, I think. Um, if I, if I take too long, maybe Beer Man will start singing. We'll see. All right. We'll be right back, guys.
Okay, I'm back. I think uh, I'm going to try and uh, finish the song, and then I think that'll be it for tonight. I'll have to plan to do more of a, co uh, of a karaoke stream sometime, though, because it is so much fun. Oh, uh-oh. Well. <laughs> Hang on a second. <laughs> All right, uh, unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to finish the song. Sorry, guys. Uh, next time I do a karaoke, I'll do it. Um, but for now, I'm going to send you guys over to Chanel. Uh, go, uh, we'll uh, post the link in the chat. Uh, go over, say hi. Uh, I think she's actually good with Raiders, so you can, you know, you can say, you know, you know, say hi, you know, be like, hey, Senna, or not a, uh, Minna, Minna Cynthia. I'm so used to seeing Santa raids. <laughs> so I will go wrangle the dough babies. Um, I'm so glad you guys joined me tonight to talk about broth and singing and other rambly things, you know. Uh, I hope everyone has a great sleep and a good day tomorrow. Uh, stay fresh, my friends, and good night.